Well, good morning, church. How has your week been? Uh, my week has been interesting. Um, so uh, I've got this new job where I'm the chaplain at Hospice of Southern Illinois. Um, and it's really a good job. I like it. Uh, I get to go out. I get to uh, see patients and, and help people uh, during probably the worst time of their life. Uh, you know, I get to see patients who are who are dying. I get to uh, minister to their families who are, are losing a loved one. Uh, but at the same time, it's uh, emotionally taxing. And so uh, it's it's great and it's wonderful getting to help these people, but uh, it kind of wears you out at the end of the day. Uh, but, uh, but I really enjoy it. And so um, that's how my week's been uh, the past couple of weeks, uh, which kind of brings me to, to what I wanted to talk about today. Uh, sometimes in the midst of that, in the midst of, uh, of helping people and uh, being emotionally, uh, drained, we forget to do things, right? We get that thing that we want to do, but then at the end of the day, you're like, oh man, I forgot to do whatever that thing is. I, I gotta make sure I do that tomorrow. But then the next day you, you get to the end of the day and you're like, oh man, I forgot to do that thing. I got to make sure I do that tomorrow. And especially in this time of uh, a coronavirus where we're not allowed to leave the house and the days kind of blend together, uh, things go undone because you just don't get to them, right? And it's not quite procrastination where you're, you know, like, well, I'll do that later. Uh, it's more just it, you didn't get around to it and the the, you know, days become weeks and you haven't done that thing that you wanted to do. I don't know, maybe I'm the only one that, that suffers from that, but I, I feel like I'm not. Uh, you know, in fact, that's what happened last weekend. You probably noticed that there was no sermon last weekend from me. I, I didn't, I didn't make a video because Friday and Saturday and Sunday, uh, this happened where I had every intention of recording it. Uh, you know, I the sermon was written, we were gonna talk about Lazarus. Uh, I just didn't get around to recording it because this is a weird time. You know, had this been a normal week, I'd have gone to church and preached the sermon. Uh, but in this weird uh, corona pandemic stay at home time, uh, where I have to sit down like this and record it, I just didn't get around to it. Uh, do, you, do you ever have that happen where, where you've got something that you want to do and you just don't get around to doing it? And you're like, man, I've got to get that done tomorrow. First thing tomorrow, I've got to get that done. But first thing you get up and there's something else that you do. And then there's another thing that you do and it gets to the end of the day and you didn't get that thing done. It happens. And there are things that we want to do there. They're well-intentioned things. And we just don't get around to them. This happens to the Israelites. Uh, so, Israelites, they've, uh, their, their ancestors really, not as much them, but some of them were worshiping foreign gods and idols and weren't doing what God had told them uh, for, for several generations, actually. Several kings, starting with Solomon, had worshipped foreign gods. The, the people of Judah did better than the people of Israel, but even the people of Judah uh, worshipped foreign gods and didn't do a good job. And they eventually, God says, have had enough, and he sends them into captivity, in the, the people of uh, Judah anyway, sends them into captivity in the land of Babylon. And they're captives in Babylon for quite a while. Uh, eventually, Babylon is defeated by the Persians. And now the people are living in Babylon under Persian rule. And it's under Persian rule that the people of Israel are allowed to go back to, to rebuild their homeland. Right When the Babylonians came in, 
they destroyed the walls of the city. They, they, the Bible says that the, in Nehemiah, it tells us that the gates were burned with fire. Uh, I don't know what else you would burn gates with besides fire, but they're, they're burned with fire. Um, and the temple is destroyed. And if you read the books of Ezra and Nehemiah, uh, Nehemiah is all about the people coming back and rebuilding the walls of the city. Uh, for protection. Uh, Ezra is all about the two journeys. There were actually two groups sent back to rebuild the temple. So Zerubbabel, uh, which is just a name that I really like, uh, is sent back with a group. Zerubbabel is kind of the governor and uh, Yeshua is the, the high priest. And they come back and they rebuild the altar and then they rebuild the temple. Um, and then later, uh, that's the first group that comes back. And then later, Nehemiah hears that even though they've rebuilt the temple, the walls are in ruins. And so he comes back along with Ezra, and Nehemiah helps to rebuild the walls, while Ezra helps to rebuild the spiritual heritage of the people. He, he starts teaching from the temple, from the books of the law, and rebuilds kind of the spiritual side of the people. And so they do this in order to, to reclaim their homeland and, and come back to themselves. Uh, but this takes a long time because the first group that came back with Zerubbabel, and we don't read about this in Ezra, we, we actually read about this in one of the other prophets, uh, they got distracted. They got busy doing other things and not rebuilding the temple. Because we need to rebuild the temple, but we've got these other things we need to do. We'll get to it tomorrow. Oh man, we were supposed to start rebuilding the temple. We got to do that tomorrow. But they just kept getting distracted. And so we read about that. Let me pull it out here. We read about that in the book of Haggai. All right, Haggai is a prophet, and so we're going to read from chapter 1 of the book of Haggai. And it says, In the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, on the first day of the month, the word of the Lord came by the hand of Haggai the prophet to Zerubbabel the son of Sheltiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, or Yeshua in the, in the Hebrew, uh, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest. So Darius is the king of Persia, who is ruling over the land of Babylon, where they live, and he is the one who has sent uh, Zerubbabel and Joshua back to rebuild. But things keep getting in the way, and the people keep getting busy, and so uh, Haggai comes to them. Verse 2, thus says the Lord of hosts, these people say the time has not yet come to rebuild the house of the Lord. They've got other things that keep getting in the way. It's, we we got to do it, but it, we, we got these other things we got to do. And they've gotten busy. Then the word of the Lord came by the hand of Haggai the prophet. It is a time for you yourselves, or sorry, is it a time for you yourselves to dwell in your paneled houses while this house lies in ruins? The thing they've gotten busy doing is building their houses. Sure, God expected them. I don't expect you to, to, you know, sleep out in the open. Come back, build some temporary housing, and then work on the temple. Uh, but that temporary housing uh, kept getting more and more permanent. Uh, he says here, paneled houses. These aren't just, uh, you know, tents or, you know, even quick-made houses that they can live in. These are fancy houses. They're, they're making these houses nice. They're not building houses, they're building homes. And they've made them nice. And you know, God isn't against you having a nice house, but you still gotta do the work he's called you to do, right? They should have waited to make these houses nice until after they had built the temple, but they keep getting busy. I'm betting some of us are busy right now with projects. I know we are at our house. Um, you know, I go to work and Katie and the kids have got nothing else to do but 
projects. Uh, and some of those projects require some stuff from me. And so I come home and I've got things I've got to get done so that tomorrow they can do their projects. And some of the things that I need to be doing get put off because I've got projects. I've got things to do around the house. And so I postpone some of the other things sometimes, right? We get busy doing projects and we don't get busy doing what we need to do. Uh, now, therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You have sown much and harvested little. You eat, but you never have enough. You drink, but you never have your fill. You clothe yourself, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages does so to put them into a bag with holes. Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up to the hills and bring wood and build the house that I will ta may take pleasure in it, and that I may be glorified, says the Lord. You look for much, and behold, it came to little. And when you brought it home, it, I blew it away. Why, declares the Lord of hosts, because of my house that lies in ruin, while each of you busies himself with his own house. Therefore the heavens above you have withheld the dew, and the earth has withheld its produce. And I called for a drought on the land, and the hills, on the grain, the new wine, the oil, on what the ground brings forth, no man and beast, and on all their labors. God says you're so busy doing stuff, and it amounts to nothing. That's what we do often, isn't it? We busy ourselves doing stuff that in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't matter, right? Sure, we think it matters right now, but really, it, it's not going to matter in the end. We busy ourselves with earthly things. Jesus tells us, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, right? Busy yourself with heavenly things. Do the stuff that needs to get done, for the kingdom. Busy yourself with kingdom work. We're so busy with earth work that oftentimes the kingdom work doesn't get done. Right? Earth work isn't bad. God isn't saying live on the streets and be a street preacher every day. Right? He's not saying don't feed your kids because you need to be feeding my people. Right? He says he doesn't say don't pay your bills give your money to the church. God says do both, right? Neither one of those things should be the only thing that you do, right? God says take care of your family, do the things that need to get done there, but also take care of my kingdom and do the things that need to get done there. It's not, a, it's not an all or nothing kind of thing. It's a both and. There are things at the house that need to get done, right? Right now, I've got to uh, figure out my why my washer's squealing. And I've got to get a new uh, dishwasher put in. Because my kids are tired of washing dishes by hand. Uh, but I also have ministry that needs to get done. I also have things that need to get done. This sermon is as much for me as it is for you. Uh, I got to apologize for, for not getting the sermon recorded last week. That, that wasn't okay. Um, I let earthly things get in the way last week. So let's all strive to not let earthly things get in the way this week. Those earthly things, they still need done. There are, there are things that need doing. There are jobs that you have to do. But there are kingdom things that need done too. Just because we're on a, uh, a lockdown doesn't mean we can't still serve the Lord. Whether that's through your job or through uh, Facebook and, and talking to people there or phone calls or text messages or, or handwritten letters, uh, right? I, I've heard it said a lot lately that we shouldn't be socially distancing. We should be physically distancing. We should not be socially distancing. We need to still be social. We still need to still be contacting people and telling people about the love of God. 
just not from physical proximity, right? We still need to be sharing the love of God, sharing the grace of God, telling people the good news of the gospel. There is still kingdom work that needs to and can be done in this time. And we need to make sure that the physical, earthly work that we need to do doesn't get in the way, right? Uh, I heard someone tell me that, you know, oftentimes we're like, man, I just, I can't find time in my day to, to do my devotions and to, and to spend time with God. Well, maybe that's because you're trying to fit God in your day instead of having God be the focus of your day and fitting the other stuff in. And I know that's hard to do because it's not the mindset that America uh, promotes. But let's try to look at it that way this week of having God be the priority and fitting in the other stuff, right? That's what God tells the people of Israel. He says, build my house and in your off time, do the other stuff. And they do. They, they come back and they build the temple and they do a good job. Let's build our temple. Let's work on the things that God wants us to do and do kingdom work this week. Let's sit down today, spend some time uh, praying and figuring out what it is that God wants you to do this week and make that the priority and then fit the other stuff in around it. Let's pray. Lord God, I thank you that you are a God who loves us, that you are a God of grace and forgiveness, that even when we don't deserve it, you love us and you forgive us when we fail. And you say, okay, pick yourself up and, and let's do it. Let's try it again. God, I pray that this week we would make you the focus, that we would do the work of the kingdom and do the earthly, worldly things that we need to do in our off time. Lord, I love you and thank you for all you do for us, but I thank you most for your son and for his sacrifice on the cross. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, church, I love you. Uh, I can't wait to see you again in person. Uh, but until then, I hope you have a great week.